In this video, I'm going to go over vascular and non-vascular plants and then go into more detail about one group of vascular plants, the gymnosperms. The other major group are the angiosperms, but I'll cover that in a separate video. So starting more broadly, um, non-vascular plants are simple plants. They don't have sophisticated ways of moving waters or sugars around, so they just go cell by cell. And if you think about how inefficient that is, it makes sense that these plants stay pretty small. Think about moss and algae. As plants evolved, they became more complex and they started to dedicate certain cells to moving water and sugars around. This is called the vascular system. The two main components of a vascular system is the xylem and the phloem. The xylem moves water and inorganic substances from the roots up to the top of the plant, to the, to the leaves. Whereas the phloem moves sugars from wherever the sugars are made through photosynthesis to wherever it's needed. And some of these vascular systems are so sophisticated that you can have huge trees. Trees can get over 300 feet tall. It's pretty amazing. Two major groups of vascular plants are the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. The gymnosperms came first. The name gymnosperm means naked seed, and their seeds are not covered by a fruit. They're usually found in cones, like in conifers, or individually, like in a yew or a ginkgo. And you might be looking at these pictures of the yew and ginkgo cones, and you might be thinking, well, those totally look like fruits, but that fleshy material around the seed is actually just part of the seed. So in contrast, you have angiosperms, which are the flowering plants, and these do develop what we traditionally consider as fruit to surround the seed. Conifers make up the largest group of gymnosperms. These are the cone-bearing plants. Most people know a conifer when they see one, and the cones on these plants can be woody, um, like in a pine, or they can be fleshy like podocarpus. Conifers are woody plants, mostly evergreen trees that tend to have a very strong single trunk, though they can become more round-headed when they're mature. You'll find needles, scales, or all like foliage on conifers. Many also use resin for self-defense, so when they're injured, they produce copious amounts of pitch or sap. If you've ever cut through a pine tree, you'll know because you get that resin all over your ropes and your equipment, and it's very hard to remove. An interesting group of gymnosperms you may work on are the cycads. They look like little palms, but they actually produce cone-like structures called strobili. But there's also an interesting gymnosperm that you should definitely know. It just does not appear to be like any other gymnosperm, and that's the ginkgo. Ginkgos are Chinese trees that are now commonly planted in a lot of urban environments because they're very tolerant of those conditions. It's a really ancient tree and it's the only species in its entire order. It's a weird one. So the cones totally look like fruits and their their foliage looks like a leaf that you would expect on a broadleaf tree, not a gymnosperm. And they have separate male and female trees. This is one of those instances where you should definitely plant a male tree. If you plant a female tree, those fleshy cones, once they drop on the ground and start decaying, they're going to smell horrible. Um, it's been described as vomit or dog shit. But if you can get past that, um, in moderation, you can actually eat the seed that's inside. It's used very commonly in some Asian cuisines, um, but you can't eat too much of it because it can be toxic. That's it for this short summary of gymnosperms. I'm going to cover angiosperms next. As far as I 
I'm aware there's no real differences in how you manage the separate groups.